Okay, now we know what courage is about, standing up here. <laughs> Anyhow, in life it seems like you meet different people, friends, family, who you learn things from and you take away lessons from. My dad was one of those people. When I was a kid growing up, he used to always say to us, sometimes you just got to close your eyes and jump. Now the first time I think he probably closed his eyes and took a leap of faith was during his eighth grade graduation. He saw a pretty little girl in ruffles walk across the stage. Now he had never met her, didn't even know her name, but the story we were always told was that he leaned over and he whispered in his best friend's ear, I'm going to marry that girl someday. That girl, years later, would become the mother to his 11 children. They settled on the farm that his family had worked for generations and began to build their life together. Now, if any of you know anything about farming, it's hard work and it's really little money. So they had a difficult time making ends meet. Dad was forced to take a job here in town at Oscar Myers. He would get up at one in the morning, drive the hour drive to the east side, work a long shift, come home, change clothes, and go out and do the chores. Because so there were cows to milk and crops to harvest, and it just seemed never ending. There would be times I remember that he would be in the fields till like eight or nine at night. And mom would hold dinner, and every single one of us would wait. Because as a family, we all ate together. He'd go to sleep for just a few extra hours and get back up and start that grueling cycle all over again. This went on for many years until the opportunity arrived to buy the local drive-in. Now, mom and dad had never run a restaurant before, unless, of course, you consider feeding 11 kids <laughs> and a bunch of grandkids by this time. Well, they simply just closed their eyes and jumped. By this time, most of the kids had left home. There was just one brother who was running the farm, a sister who was set to graduate, and me, I was a junior in high school. Mom took over the duties of the, the drive-in, and Dad continued both working at Oscars and running the farm. After some time, though, he retired from both Oscar Myers and farming. That's when, I guess in a weird sense you'd say he got to sleep in, because he would then start getting up at four in the morning and going over to the drive-in. Now, he never really did much to run the drive-in. He'd putz around and clean some machines and maybe do a little setup here and there. I think he just really liked the peace and quiet. But he also kept this pot of coffee on and he would get a box of donuts from like the bakery that was downtown. And my dad was a great man, but he wasn't really that good of a farmer and he wasn't a very, he wasn't a very smart businessman because if a traveler would stop in before opening, he'd give him a cup of coffee, he'd give him a donut, never charged him a penny. He just wanted to talk to him. He wanted the company and the conversation. I think he also missed farming because he planted this beautiful flower garden along the highway for travelers to enjoy. Every day he'd go out there and just all sorts of colors of flowers. Well, again, the years went by and mom and dad's bodies slowed with age and the drive-in proved too much for them. Then it was my turn and I simply closed my eyes and jumped and returned to run the place. Dad, though, still came over and tended to those flowers. And I remember one day, a couple of years after I had taken over, 
he calls me out and he points down to this little sprig of a tree that was trying to grow up over his flowers. And he goes, once that guy gets strong, I'm going to dig it up and give it a home on the farm. It just needs a chance to grow. Every day he'd go out there and he'd lovingly weed around it. He placed a stake next to it and tied it up so the heavy spring winds wouldn't topple it during its young, fragile state. Sadly though, my dad fell ill and he was bedridden at home with that pretty little girl in ruffles still tending to his every needs. And that tree, it grew to three, four, five feet. Its branches like, were reaching out to the sky as if they were trying to breathe in life, preparing for its journey to the farm. It's been 17 years since my dad has passed. That tree never made it to the farm. It has grown to 150 feet, and it towers tall into the sky, well above the drive-in. And you know, maybe I'm not such a good businesswoman, because over the years, people have said to me, you need to cut that tree down. It's blocking your sign. You're losing business. Get rid of the tree. No one has, and no one ever will, convince me to cut that tree. That's my dad's tree. He loved that tree, just as he did me. He nurtured it, just as he did me. It waves hello to people as they drive by, just like my dad once did. Now, when I stand at the window of that drive-in, I look out at that tree, and I know he's still with me whispering in my ear. Don't be afraid, Lanita. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and jump. I'll catch you. Thank you.